Magic Kings has finally arrived, 2nd of September. One of the things that we're really excited about is um, giving away our goodie bags. Um, we've had a lot of support from so many people and a lot of um, companies have actually given us um, some hair products to put in, uh, in the goodie bags. I've been editing so many times sometimes I was like this is really boring like people are going to pay for this I don't know so yeah but I'm really glad that I met great people and um, what they brought to the movie was really was really amazing and I didn't know what to expect because to me the natural hair movement a year ago was new to me so I've, the first time I've been to a workshop was a first sanctions workshop so yeah I had no idea so much the long way was a discovery so so when he saw me, I had no more hair. So when he saw me, he told me, um, you know what, you had, you were at 80% of you. But now, you are at 65. So I told him, so I lost 15 points. And my boyfriend, he um, told me that if I cut in my hair, he would break up with me. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was, it was a film that brought out aspects that we all think about, okay, but we never discuss it or say it. And also, it made you think about new points. But it was, it's inspiring. It's lovely. You know, it's, it's, it was. Um, I think in the room when we were all watching it, you know, we were all agreeing at the same time, all laughing because we all had similar stories to tell. And it's a fabulous film. So well done. Well done. <laughs> I thought the film was really informative, it's really educational and it's, it sheds light on a lot of uh, the issues that black women face with regards to hair and what I really got from it is the fact that it's not just hair, it's more than hair, it's about identity, it's about appearance, it's about what other people think and what you think other people think about you. Um, so it's, we, I think we need to see more things like this just so we can relearn more about our hair and relearn more about black culture. Just like the, the movie on YouTube, it's the same thing. It had so much power, it had so much everything. So many people was inspired, also because I was there, but also a lot of people who want to go straight with their own hair. I love it. It was done like super. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. It was brilliantly produced. It was informative. It was humorous. So it was very well rounded, I would say. So yeah. Did you ever feel like giving up? Yes. Um, when I was supposed to submit the, the the film to my lecturer, I couldn't export the movie for some reason, and I tried for a week. I didn't know how to do it, so I was trying every day. I was crying, and I told my lecturer, "You know what? I, I give up. This is too much for me." So never mind. I don't know. Maybe I won't graduate this year. She was like, "No, keep." keep doing it, keep doing it. And then she saw it, she was like, I had no idea about this whole natural hair, relaxed hair. I always had black students, but I just had no idea. And just having the, the best mark and the price that I got from, from uni, it was, it was really rewarding. I never had um, a yeah, challenge like this, so yeah. Hiya, and um, my question is for the standards and cut. Hiya. Um, what I'd like to know is being in the industry that you're in, have you found that you've had to look a certain way or portray a certain image in order for you to sort of do well knowing that you're in the media industry? You know, and I went to see my boss and I said, um, um, Peter, I'm going to cut my hair. He went, right. Um, I said, um, 
you know, I'm just letting you know this, it's a big thing. It's, it's a big thing for who, the person, you know. And I sat there kind of goldfishing for a couple of seconds, because <laughs> it's not the reaction I expected. And he did say to me, he said, okay, so how short's it gonna be? Because the only reason I went to see him is that any wardrobe changes, basically our look is our uniform, okay? We don't have to get um, permission from them, but we just need to make sure we have the look. And so Peter, I don't think you realize, my hair is out here. I've got big, big hair. You know, he says, okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, and obviously we couldn't have big hair reading the news, as we couldn't have with anybody else. Um, he says, but you didn't have to do that to your hair. He says, you've taken that upon yourself to do it. He says, would you expect me to curly curl my hair? And that's, those are his exact words to me. Would you expect me to curly curl my hair to be more accepted, say, if I was in Africa? And I said, no. And he said, all right, do your hair then. It's like when you have Afro hair, you have superpowers, like, wow. <laughs> wow, your hair, wow, it's different. Um, it's just some people are not aware, but a lot of people who are not black, they're not aware of what we actually do to, to achieve these stars. So that's the challenge, like making people aware of it. I think what's going on in the wider market is um, essentially what the has said, that, um, and I'm not even sure it's about the learning skills, I think it's about the whole the education, because most people have gone through the college system, um, learning how to relax hair, how to change the texture of hair, how to delay your afro hair, that's what they learn. And um, quite often, um, there isn't the option to study uh, afro textured hair um, in any depth. But I think what's happening, I mean, it's really interesting, I was sitting there looking at the film and I said, well, why are we here? Because <laughs> as a panelist, because actually all the women here have the answers. I think what I really liked about this film is that it um, showed the views, opinions of views and opinions of a much younger um, set of women uh, than were in the industry uh, maybe five years ago as as customers, and I have to say that I think they have what I picked up from the film is that actually. They have all the answers they need, you know. Um, I think they, they understand um, that actually choices about natural hair confidence, about wearing their hair natural and so on, comes from them. Um, I mean, for instance, if you take the discussion you were having about is natural hair appropriate for the workplace, the really strong message that came out is that actually if I feel it's appropriate um, and I'm confident about it, then it, it works, you know rather than always externalizing and looking for other people to give you permission. So it was a, it, it's, it's a wonderful film. It's nicely made. Um, I think it gives you a lot of food for thought. Congratulations. Do we have the lady who embraced her Indian hair in the room? Yeah. No. <laughs> I love that woman. <laughs> um, the point she was making there is a very valid point, okay? When you see somebody with a weave or with hair that we know is not their own, a lot of people don't. Don't ever judge, okay? Don't ever, ever judge because you don't know what's going on under that hair. Um, it's like when I had patches, you know, I had to have styles and whatever done to hide my patches. But I was constantly aware because I thought, God, if somebody touches this, they're going to see what's going on underneath. So don't ever, ever judge. It's a personal choice. Was there any aspect of the film whilst you were recording and editing that you thought, hmm, I could explore this more? I think all we said about relaxes and all the diseases that we found we, we are finding out right now is I don't know, I've never heard that before and because um, 
the, yeah, because I had only a few questions to the interviewees, I, I was not prepared to explore more that um, area. But I think that was really interesting. And um, when I read Thank God I'm Natural from Christia, that's how um, I'm, I came across Isabella's story. And I didn't know that it could be so damaging. What do you think of Isabella? I think she's really courageous. And it's really great that she, she can be open to speak about it because the first time I, I met her, I was thinking I need to be delicate, this is really hard. And I didn't know how I could ask questions, but she answered all my questions. And that was really great and I think it's really inspirational and I'm really glad that people saw her today. I did thought to myself, I have to do something about it because I know for sure that God didn't let me go through this just by myself. And it was seven years before I could accept it and handle it. And now it took 15 years before I can take it off and show the people what can also happen. Even if you're, uh, it, it won't happen to me, but it can happen to everybody. Look at me, I'm just, just like you. And it can happen to everybody. And I wanna show uh, everybody here, America, Holland, wherever I am, that uh, relaxers can be very strong, and it's just a matter of weakness that you have inside that can make you burn. And that's only what it takes. And that's why I want to show everybody, if you have hair, be proud of it. If it's curly, if it's uh, coarse, it doesn't matter, you have hair. Because once you lost it, it's gone. Okay. And another girl had braids in, and she was like, I want to take out the braids, I've never had my hair out for years, but I'm scared, and I said, why? And she said, because I've never, I don't ever have my hair out. So I said, I'm going to take it out for you now. So I cut off the braids and I took it out and she was almost in tears. And I was like, you look lovely. Look, your hair's fine. Look, go and get these products. The next day she ran to the hair shop and she was like, I bought all these products. And now she has her hair out. For some, she's 18. She's never, ever worn her own natural hair out. And it's because of the workshops, the, the people coming together, like people like you coming to these events and supporting people who are making the products, who are teaching um, other people how to take off their hair. Some people just want to come here because they want to see other people with natural hair. They want to see the different faces and the variety that you can have with natural hair. There isn't one image of beauty and it just takes a re-education and a recondition in everything was an effect of a political movement, whereas now I really think it is a lifestyle choice. I think women are just um, rediscovering their hair and it's not politicised at all, I don't think. We've definitely seen a, um, more of an interest in natural hair, as I said on the, the film. We get more queries via email, Twitter, etc. with women wanting to see more natural hairstyles in the magazine. So we have increased the pagination to, you know, to respond to that. At the end of the day, just hair, it shouldn't be, um, what you say, it shouldn't be that deep, like the way we talk about it, it should be, it should, just, it should be just hair, but we're not there yet. What's next? I don't know, more screenings, uh, we're hoping to do some screenings in Europe, so as I'm from Switzerland, that will be easy, and then I have some friends in Belgium and maybe Paris but then I don't know I spent so much money for that project so I hope that um, we could have money to at least pay the, the, the train tickets or plane tickets to do that but from the response I have on, on YouTube and Facebook I know that people are interested but I don't know how I can do to have screenings there because the whole project was self-funded and uh, I don't have enough money to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> but you're happy. I'm happy. Yeah. That's a good way to end. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs>